Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at yet another unofficial Windows version. I know that you guys can't believe it, but yes, we've done a lot of videos like this on this channel, but this one is going to kind of be one of a kind, something a little bit different than most of the other unofficial Windows versions. And um, that is specifically because this one actually got some attention from Microsoft themselves, and I'll go into a little bit of uh, more detail about that later on in the video, but this was actually sent to me by the same guy who sent me Windows XP Ultimate, so I want to give a huge thank you to you. And this was actually created around the time of the Windows Longhorn reset process, and essentially what happened there, and I went into a lot more detail on this in uh, a dedicated video that I'll have in a card right now. And I'm not gonna be going into too much detail about the reset because I'm sure that most of you guys know what that whole deal was and what happened and what ended up, or and uh, how that it eventually affected Windows Vista. Um, but this was actually created by a group of people on the website jojo.org, which has since been uh, shut down and is no longer available online. And the main purpose behind this team creating this was to kind of preserve the pre-reset Longhorn experience and actually make it more stable. There were some attempts in this uh, project, Longhorn Reborn right here, to actually make the OS a lot more stable than it was and to um, do a better implementation of features like WinFS, which was a huge feature back when Microsoft was you know, previewing Windows Longhorn, and it was basically killed off with the reset, and you know, Windows Vista never shipped with a feature like WinFS. So this was actually based off of build 4074, and build 4074 was a milestone seven build. It was actually made a few uh, builds before the reset happened. It was not the very last one, but there was like four or five builds after that. Um, and then the actual reset occurred, and that was in around 2004, uh, early 2005, that time frame. And 4074 was very unique in the fact that there was actually, you, you could, as I've seen videos of it, I haven't been able to do it myself, but you were actually able to enable the desktop composition engine and get Aero working, or what was then to be called Aero. You could actually get it working. I was never able to do that. I tried to make a video on it, but was never able to actually get it. Uh, the feature to work. So maybe in this um, unofficial version right here, we may actually be able to get error working. I'm not really sure, but we're going to be seeing what this is all about. But before we do that, I want to talk about how that this build actually got the attention from Microsoft, which is something that I don't think any of the other um, unofficial versions of Windows that I've taken a look at on this channel, they haven't done that. They never got any attention from, uh, from Microsoft, but the attention was not positive at all. It was mostly negative. And the reason for that is, is, as you can see from this Ars Technica article right here that was published on June 28th, 2007, Microsoft shuts down Longhorn Reloaded. So yeah, essentially what ended up happening was Microsoft was, I guess, not really too uh, pleased or happy that this independent development team was redistributing a modified version of Windows Longhorn, which was based on Windows XP, which a lot of people still used at this time. So they actually sent over a cease and desist letter to the uh, admins on jojo.org and they actually published this post here. Now the site, as I said, is not up, but you can still get to this page through the Wayback Machine. This is an archive from July 4th, 2007, and it was essentially a, a post by the site admin saying that it is with sad news that I have to inform you that today, due to a cease and desist letter we received from Microsoft, we are no longer able to provide you with a download link to Longhorn Reloaded. So the, uh, the development was basically shut down by Microsoft. So yeah, in, in the post here, you see that he's very sorry, but this is something that he obviously has to do because this was a legal, uh, action essentially that he if he didn't do it he could have been sued so uh, they had to essentially shut the entire project down um, and I was trying to browse on the main website here but it says that you have to log in to actually view downloads but I was trying to get to the download page just to see um, what it was like but it's saying that you do have to be logged in so that was essentially the last time everybody had heard about Longhorn Reloaded and as far as I know because I had never heard of it um, until now, essentially, I, I hadn't even heard of this back in uh, 2006 or 2007. Um, people just kind of forgot about it. And today, hopefully, I'll be bringing a new light to it by talking about it again. So as you guys probably saw from the very beginning of the video, one of the first major differences is the fact that during the installation process for this Longhorn Reloaded project, 
it actually does not boot into the Windows pre-installation environment like it does in the regular 4074 build. This one actually goes back to the original Windows XP style where it's that blue screen or really just the Windows NT style in general. Whereas it's not really graphical, it's all keyboard based navigation so you have to use the arrow keys and the enter key to actually uh, navigate the menus. But once we go through that process and do a restart, you can see that right here it starts to look a lot different we've got a, a different background for one while it's still in the same windows xp layout there are a lot uh, of changes in the actual text where it's telling you about the features where it actually says things like welcome to longhorn reloaded it explains what the project is and something very interesting it actually says that this is a beta build of Longhorn Reloaded. So Longhorn Reloaded actually never ended up finishing development due to the fact that Microsoft actually shut it down. So this is not the final build. So there are going to be some bugs in here as I've already discovered. Uh, there are a few bugs in actually getting some of the features to work and in some of the automated scripts actually there are a few bugs where it doesn't run correctly which i'll be going into more detail on later on in the video so yeah the first sign i would say that you're not even using 4074 is from the very beginning right when you boot it up and boot into the installation because 4074 as you guys may know goes into a pre-installation graphical environment it looks very nice um, kind of similar to what Windows Vista did. But besides for the slight visual changes on this setup screen right here, everything else works exactly as you would expect it to from Windows XP. You have the same menu prompts, you have the same license agreement, although it's the Windows Longhorn uh, beta pre-release agreement. And the product key that you actually put into Longhorn Reloaded to activate it is the same key from 4074. So there was no change there. It's the same exact key it's going to work so here we go it's going to go ahead and run some uh, command line uh, commands here it says press any key to continue this already looks a little bit yeah so this is already we'll go ahead and press any key to continue longhorn reloaded temporary installer setup so there's already some stuff on here that uh, is not normally on uh, the regular 4074 build of longhorn so uh, it did the pre-install, now it's installing LHR, and then it's going to do the post-install. So this looks to be like a regular Windows installer package, an MSI, so we'll just wait for it to uh, to work here. So here is the install shield wizard for Longhorn Reloaded Temporary Installer. So I don't really know what this is, but uh, we're going to install it. So it's given us an error here saying, could not write value to MRU list EX to key. Verify you have sufficient access to the key. So this may have been a bug because it looks like it's trying to write something to the registry, but we don't have access because we're not running under like the uh, administrator account. We'll just ignore, I guess. Ignore. That might have been a bug. Um, all right, we'll go ahead and click on finish. I don't know if that just screwed up a bunch of stuff, but that is most likely a bug um, because like I said, this was a pre-release version of Longhorn Reloaded. So now it actually comes up, it uh, kind of shows you what it's doing here. So it ran um, instserve.exe to install uh, a service, which it did install, so it made a service. And now it's actually, it's trying to apply arrow.theme, but we have to actually uh, confirm it here. So it's essentially acting as if you're double clicking on the arrow.theme file, but there's no arrow dot theme here there's only jade so we'll go ahead and hit apply and there we go so we got the jade theme alrighty so here we are on the login screen for Longhorn Reloaded and as you can see right off the bat there's a major difference I mean well I mean they just changed the background but it, it just makes the whole thing look a lot different uh, in 4074 this is actually just a plain black background there's no uh, wallpaper here so this is something that they changed it looks actually pretty nice so we're going to go ahead and log into the system and this is the standard user account selector so we're just going to log in with the admin account so one thing that you will notice right off the bat that is different is there's no sidebar at least there's no sidebar until you actually mouse over and you'll see that it does this nice pop out effect now this was not enabled by default in 4074 the, the feature might have been there because when you go in, into uh, properties here, you see that we have this auto hide the sidebar that is checked by default. In 4074, the regular build, it just looks like this. So it's not auto hidden. 
Um, but I actually kind of like it like that because it does give you more space on the uh, desktop. But it works very similarly to um, auto hiding the taskbar, where it literally just does the same pop out effect. It does the exact same thing over here, which is which is pretty cool. But we'll go ahead and uh, disable that. We can of course change um, the positioning of everything if we want. We can outright fully disable the sidebar if we want to as well. But most of these options were standard in the regular build of 4074. So let's take a look at some of the programs that are installed uh, by default. Now there's not really many added on third party programs like we have in some of the or in most of the other unofficial Windows versions like XP Ultimate, XP Gold, where the developers of those uh, will actually bundle in third-party programs, some of which were not acquired through uh, legal means, but uh, nevertheless, they end up putting them in there. This one, we don't have any of those third-party programs, but we do have something called Alpha Attic Productions 2007, or this, this is the author, I guess, of this. He just you know put his name on it. And inside of this folder, we have the Longhorn Reloaded Temporary Installer. And this was that installer that launched before we actually booted in. I believe what it was trying to do when it was doing that whole process was trying to modify the registry and add the keys that you need to actually get the desktop composition engine to work. And we're going to be trying to see if we can do that here. But as for actual programs, the only major difference is there is this desktop.ini file inside of every single uh, program group for whatever reason. So you go into startup. Uh, well, there's not. It, it's not in here. But in this one here, it's it's not in there either. But in in accessories and in pretty much all of these accessories folders, you can see system tools. There's a desktop that I and I entertainment. There's not in communications. There's one there. Accessibility. There's one. So for whatever reason, that was that was put in there. But the main thing I'm interested in doing is is let's see if we can actually get Arrow to work properly. So I just inserted the um, Melcher driver pack, which is available on uh, the collectionbook.info. And what it essentially is, is it is a set of patch drivers that will allow VMware to work with Longhorn's uh, desktop composition engine. So the first thing we got to do is launch our device manager, not MSC, and we are going to update the display driver. So that's just going to be, I mean, you can see we've got a couple uh, uh, hardware devices that are not installed. But we're interested in this display driver here. We want to update this standard VGA graphics to actually get the VMware. I am currently using VMware. So we're just going to uh, install from a list of, or install from a specific location. All right, so it was able to find the driver in there. And now we're just going to um, click on cancel because it's going to say that this drive is not acceptable or it is not compatible with Longhorn. We're just going to ignore that because it, it should still work normally. All right, so we are back and you can see that we have booted it back into the OS, and we actually have some error glass transparency going on already. You can see that uh, the taskbar here, you can kind of see through it, and you can actually see through the entire sidebar. Check that, check that out. Um, yeah, I guess this just didn't just didn't load correctly. We've got like this like one sixteenth of the uh, sidebar up here, and the rest is just gone. Um, let's see if okay, just relaunch Explorer. Oh, I guess it doesn't like the... Oh, now it just totally killed all... Yeah, now there's no glass transparency anymore. Um, well, that's interesting. I think that the driver is still applied. Yeah, so we do have the proper driver installed. But what we actually have to do is run a script, which I've put on the C drive here. Let's see if I still have it in here. Yeah. So let me just basically show you what this does. So this, first of all, it calls run DLL32 to run the actual... Um, uh, uxdesk.dll which will start the composition and then it actually runs sbctl which is actually already running as you can see down here and i'm actually going to change this to task kill slash f slash im explorer and then we're just going to launch explorer again that way it will relaunch itself and to show you the registry keys you, you need to modify that's going to be in uh, hkey local machine software microsoft windows current version and explorer and you want to add um, MIL desktop and MIL explorer and give them both a value of one. These are both uh, D word 32 bit values. And you want to give them a value of one, which apparently they got set back to zero for some reason. What these do is they basically 
Uh, the one for Explorer enables the Aeroglass transparency for the Explorer, and the MIL desktop actually makes the Aero stars, which will float around the uh, desktop, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to actually log off and log back on so that the changes from the registry will take effect. So there's the Aero stars. And so this is what they look like. They just kind of float around on the desktop. They're, they're, they're just there for like a visual um, enhancement pretty much. They're kind of going underneath the taskbar for whatever reason. Um, and then we actually want to launch and go into my computer here. Now you'll see that this is the issue in that you you won't get like you you can't access any of the or you can't see any of the uh, explorer windows until we actually start this uh, script here. So we're going to, just going to go C start.bat and there we go. Check that out. Okay. It's actually working. I think this is the first time I've actually gotten this to work. Um it's not fully transparent, but it is transparent. That is definitely some Aeroglass transparency. That is really cool. I think this is honestly the first time that I've gotten this to work. So I was actually just looking back at some of my old videos, and uh, if you guys remember a video I did just over two years ago on Sigma OS 3.0, um, I called it Windows Longhorn as it should have been and it had kind of a similar goal to Longhorn Reloaded here in that it was trying to make Windows Longhorn 4074 more stable and have error glass transparency working right out of the box. Now just like in Longhorn Reloaded here I did have to install the uh, driver package with Sigma OS and uh, but I was actually able to get uh, Longhorn error glass transparency working but uh, I did not enable these arrow stars they they would have probably worked because you just have to add a second registry key but i just think that this is you know super cool and just how that these windows work it's just really really interesting it's way different than anything that windows is like today i mean there's no i mean in like windows vista it was slightly similar to this but it wasn't this detailed of an animation where it would like fold in like that and just bring it up and pop out in your face it's pretty cool um how that works and you can see that when i try to resize the window it kind of kind of starts to uh, glitch out there so that was just one of the bugs with this because this was again a very very early concept of aero so i just restarted the system once again and you can see that we actually have the uh, taskbar transparency is back for whatever reason i think when i was messing with with the sidebar and like making it appear and disappear it crashed explore and when it relaunched it didn't re-enable for the taskbar so what i'm going to do now is actually uh, launch the start.bat script and see if it will keep yeah so there we go so it actually kept uh, the taskbar transparency which is pretty cool the sidebar is kind of glitched out and I don't want to mess with it because I think it's just going to crash explore again but you can see that these windows actually look a little bit different now yeah now it actually is way different see this is what's so crazy about this is you'll you'll do slight little changes like that and it'll make the, like a whole window behave differently. So remember before how this was fully transparent and you could see through it? Well, now it's not. It's got like the edges in the green, but the actual window itself is uh, exactly like the actual interior part of it is exactly the way it was before we even launched the desktop composition engine so it's this like regular you know non-see-through color one thing that i did want to point out is this team actually modified winver here so we'll go ahead and just launch it so i can show you what it looks like uh and one thing that i am noticing is this machine is uh, behaving a lot slower like it's lagging with the sidebar out because when i was uh, doing it previously with the sidebar gone it wasn't lagging like this um, but they did change the uh, title image here so it says longhorn reloaded very nice looking uh, and they did actually change the background as well to a windows vista looking background uh, because there was a background just like this in vista but it was green so they just changed it to blue and put it in here which is kind of cool let's see if we can actually go into the uh, display properties because i want to see if we can change the color you know what let's just keep it on this because this is something like there's no green in this at all so let's go ahead and uh, open up my computer here and we'll go ahead and launch start.bat again. So no, so it does not uh, change the, because in Sigma OS it, it wasn't green, it was like a, a bluish uh, hue. Yeah, so it literally does not affect anything, like, like the color doesn't seem to affect anything. So that's definitely uh, very interesting. 
But there you have it. I mean, that is essentially a brief look at Longhorn Reloaded. Again, this was not a final release of Longhorn Reloaded by any means, so there were still some bugs. There were probably a lot of features that the team wanted to implement that weren't in here, but unfortunately, we just can't take a look at it because the project was shut down and it was never finished. But if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to get subscribed to the channel down below and turn on those notifications to get notified whenever I upload new videos on this channel, which I I do every single week and also be sure to drop me a comment letting me know if you guys have any thoughts on Longhorn Reloaded on this project would this be something that you guys would have liked to uh you know scene finished uh, if it wasn't shut down by Microsoft and what do you guys think of this compared to 4074 or even to Sigma OS uh, which one of those three do you like better be sure to let me know because I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say and as always I just want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video